Thank you for that reminder, Ms. Wetzel. Okay, there you go, Susan. All right, my friends. Well, it is eight o'clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I know your time is precious, especially on Tuesday, because bedtime is right around the corner. It is here, it's 8 p.m., which means the minute we hang up from here, I'm gonna say to Tony, it's time for me to go to bed. And he'll say, what, it's nine o'clock. We go through this same cycle every single night. night. What, it's only nine o'clock. Yes, I know, that's when KJ goes to bed. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. I'm excited that you're here. I This is the first time that I've done a webinar in my new house. So I had to set up my technology. I have a phone, I have a computer, and then I have an iPad. So hopefully technology will go well. So I'm, I'm going to share my screen and I can't because I'm not the host. Just make me the host, Susan. I'll just keep the host. I can let people in and host okay. at the time I have you know oh I can hit reclaim never mind I keep forgetting I can steal it all right Let's see we'll figure it one of these days we're going to be pros at technology maybe all right can you see my screen all right okay well thank you for joining me tonight hopefully I can still let people in yes I can Thank you so much for coming tonight. I'm really, I'm excited that you would take some time out of your evening to come and listen to what I have to say. And it's a topic that I am very passionate about and haven't been my whole life, but am now. It's taken me a long time to get to the point where I could say I'm passionate. And even despite the fact that I say I'm passionate about this topic, I have days where I feel stoppable. I feel like I could be stopped in my tracks at any moment. And today was one of those days. And I fully believe, I believe with all of my heart that one of the reasons that I felt that way is because I was doing a webinar called Unstoppable. And the devil goes, oh yeah, I'm going to show you just how unstoppable you are. I'm going to throw up things in your way today. And you're going to spend 90% of your day blubbering like a 16 year old crying, and I say that because I have a 16 year old that, that can blubber. You're gonna spend a good part of your day in tears over pretty much nothing. There's no reason for you to cry, but you're gonna do it anyway. That is how my day has gone today. Why? I don't know, because I felt stoppable. A few of my sisters reached out to me on Marco Polo and said, listen, you're KJ and gave me my little pep talk that I needed for the day. But we all have those days, right? Where we just feel like this isn't going to happen. I can't maintain that commitment that I planned on January 1st. I can't keep this up. So let's talk about New Year's, our New Year's resolutions, right? The hype. There's always hype. Every year, there is big hype about New Year's resolutions. We plan for that fresh start. Like this is my year. This is the year where everything changes for me. No matter what, I'm going forward and I'm never looking back. We start out that way. We start that way maybe a day or two before New Year's, right? And then New Year's comes and we're just ready to go. We're just raring to go. We clean out our fridges. We get rid of all that leftover peanut butter fudge and we just we go for it. We fill our fridge full of healthy, good ingredients and we're ready to go. Maybe we set a whole bunch of goals. We've got that smart goals set up. We've written down exactly what we're gonna do. Maybe there's peer pressure. There's somebody at work that's like, come on, you can do this. Let's do it together. It's peer pressure at that point. Let's start going to the gym. Let's join Trim Healthy. Let's do this, let's do that. We're, or we're thinking about the last year and how it's been a struggle and how we want this year to be different. We have hope and we have optimism. 45% of people in the United States make a resolution that is about fitness, it's about weight loss, or it's about finances. 
45% of people, that's a significant amount, you guys, a very significant amount, 45%. Like I said, the most common are fitness, their weight loss, their finances, but 80% of those resolutions, those hope, optimism, excitement, fresh start, let's go, let's do this, let's never look back. 80% of that is gone by the second week of January, excuse me, February, the second week of February, by the second week, week of February, we're going forward. We're not looking back. We're done. We've moved on. Less than 8% of people actually report success at the end of the year. They report success in their outcomes. Now, if you ask me, I think that number, 8%, is too high. I think half of those people are lying about their success. The majority of us get to the end of the year and like we're like, I remember that resolution I set last year. Maybe I should set it again this year because it didn't work last year. For me, that has been an ongoing trend in my life, whether it's been, okay, this year I'm going to be organized. This year I'm going to meal plan. This year... I'm going to buy that journal with the, the, what do they call those things? The, uh, what am I trying to say? The, uh, planner, I'm going to buy the fancy planner with all the dates and all the slots and all the stickers, and I'm going to kill it. And the only thing it has in it is January 1st. And then I didn't fill anything out. That has been my story. My whole life, major resolution. Sometimes I told people, sometimes I kept it to myself because I didn't want anybody to know when I failed. But I always, always, always was off the wagon very quickly. February, they said the the research I did said the second week of February. I think that's pushing it too. For me, it was always way before the second week of February. We've lost motivation. These challenges start to arise as we go on this journey. And the initial excitement that we felt starts to wane. We've lost our motivation. We haven't had immediate results. And so it's discouraging. We're like, I'm going to lose weight. And then I only lose a pound in the month of January. And I start to think, well, you mean I didn't eat, I didn't eat my beloved Doritos for an entire month and I only lost a pound. What are you talking about? It's discouraging. We've got busy lives. There's time constraints that get in the way and finding the energy can just be downright hard. There's distractions all around us and we choose what we're going to prioritize, whether that's going to be the demands of our family life or the demands of our resolution. And nine times out of 10, the demands of our family life wins out. We Maybe we have a setback or we get frustrated or we don't have accountability. And so there's nobody there to say, come on, keep going. You've got this. You can do this. Our routines and our old habits sneak back in. One at a time, little bits and pieces. If it's food, maybe it's those Pop-Tarts. You, you, look, I, I use Pop-Tarts as an example in everything that I teach because they, to this day, are still my favorite food, okay? I'm not, I'm not ever going to deny that a chocolate Pop-Tart or a Hot Pocket is not one of my favorite foods, even though I don't eat them. Maybe a little corner of a Pop-Tart has started to sneak in and that has given me just this little hole to start picking at. And now I'm falling back into my routine of burnt chocolate Pop-Tarts, which are just, that's what I love. Okay. Yes. I said burnt. I didn't say I was normal. Okay. Maybe it's, we view perfectionism as the requirement for our, for our resolution. If I'm not perfect at this, I might as well quit. My husband has a bad habit of stuff like that with uh, specifically a video game. If he starts a video game and he makes a mistake in the beginning and his character dies off, he's done. He, he's not playing the game anymore. He just goes in and just plays shoot him up because he's he's given it up because he, if it wasn't perfect, he's done. And that's us sometimes, whether we want to believe it or not. That's what we end up doing. But you know what? It's normal to experience dips in motivation. We can't always be gung-ho. I want to be. When I woke up this morning, I was ready to go. And then within 20 minutes of facing the day, the devil whispered in my ear and said, no, you're not unstoppable, KJ. I'm going to show you. 
today that you are stoppable. Let me just say that I showed him a thing or two today. I wasn't stoppable and I am here tonight. I didn't cancel this. I didn't eat off plan. I stayed on plan and I told the devil who's who, okay? But I felt that feeling of being not enough, not good enough, not doing well enough. I've, you know, I feel those feelings and, and they're tough. I feel those not good enough feelings. But we have to develop, we have to learn how to develop an unstoppable mindset. An unstoppable mindset literally is the secret sauce that turns your new year's resolution into a lifelong habit, a transformational change. It's, it's here. It's a mental attitude. It's not just what's in your fridge. It doesn't start there. It starts here. Every big change that you're going to experience on your health journey starts right here. You have to find ways to empower yourself, empower yourself to persevere, to say, you know what? It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to walk by the mirror and say, you're unstoppable for a moment. It's okay to have those setbacks, those struggles, those challenges. It's okay to get on the scale and see that it went up a pound instead of the other direction. And having that mental attitude that's unstoppable that says, I went up a pound, it's okay. I'm still going. This is my health journey. I'm going to thrive on it regardless of the challenges, regardless of the setbacks that hit. It doesn't matter. I'm unstoppable. That mindset has enabled me to break free of that cycle of setting resolutions. Like I said, it doesn't mean I don't ever struggle, but I'm not stoppable. I can take, I can have a moment of feeling stoppable, but that doesn't make me stoppable. I keep going. When you have an unstoppable mindset, you become completely unshakable in your commitment. Your commitment to your health, commitment to your well being. You don't let a temporary setback or a moment of low motivation define the journey. It doesn't have to define the journey. We let it. We often let those little setbacks, those little moments, that little moment of doubt that squeaks in, we let it define our entire health journey. My health journey that goes from today to the day that I die, okay? I hope that I have a long time before that day. So one little moment of doubt, one little moment of feeling not enough, one little moment of gaining some weight, one little moment of struggling with a craving, that doesn't define my journey. It It's not an indicator of my overall success. This is a continuous process and I am in it for the long haul. So we're going to talk about a couple of strategies, a couple of techniques that we can help use to cultivate this unstoppable mindset. I want to t talk about setting clear goals. I want to talk about having a solid plan. I want to talk about building healthy habits, building accountability. I want to help you understand your potential to overcome challenges, to overcome setbacks with unwavering determination, to be that girl that says no to the cravings that says no when the devil says you're stoppable you're stoppable kj i can hear him saying it with a snarky attitude i want you to be that girl that says mm, no i i don't i don't waver in my determination to get healthy this is a long term battle for me and i am ready i have my armor on and i'm ready and i'm more than anything i am willing to fight for myself i'm worth it so I am here to fight for myself. As we talk about this mindset, I want you to think about it as not just a conversation, but something that is completely within your reach. It's not reserved for the select few, you guys. Being 100% on plan is the journey that I choose, but it's not for everyone. Even, but that being said, I hear all the time, oh, I could never be 100% on plan. That's a, I, that's good for you, KJ. I'm glad that works for you. That would never work for me. It is not reserved for the select few. This 
strength to be on plan 100% comes through a lot of the things we're going to talk about tonight. Anyone can develop it. When you have the right tools, you have the right mindset, and you have the right support system, you can be unstoppable as well. You can have that feeling of being unstoppable. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is setting clear goals. Goals are so important. And specifically, setting SMART goals. If you are not familiar with SMART goals, they are powerful in goal setting. When you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going to lose some weight. That's a great goal, but it's not specific. And when you don't set a specific goal, you open yourself up to to flexibility with your goals instead of making a solid plan that you can stick with. We need direction and we need focus. We need that feeling of strength in our journey. We need exact a plan of attack. A smart goal is a goal you'll see here on the screen. It is specific. It isn't, I'm going to lose weight. It's, I'm going to lose five pounds. We're going to talk more about setting types of goals as well, but let's say five pounds, or I'm going to walk 10 minutes after every meal, or I'm going to drink 80 ounces of water a day. What is my specific goal? Very specific. The M stands for measurable. Can it be measured? Yes, it can. Walking 10 minutes can be measured. I know what 10 minutes is. I can look at my watch and go start 10 minutes and walk. I can drink 80 ounces of water. It's measurable. I can, if my goal wants to be weight loss, I can look at a scale and say, yes, it moved five pounds or no, it didn't. It's measurable. Is it achievable? Attainable is another word. I always say achievable. Is this something you can actually do? We can set, big, hairy, scary goals for ourselves, but we need to set goals that are achievable. There's no doubt that there is possibility that someday I could weigh 110 pounds. It's unlikely. I don't want to weigh 110 pounds, but is it possible? Yeah. Is it an achievable goal? Is this something I should set for myself? No, it isn't because it's It's a huge, that would be a huge, hairy, scary, terrifying goal for me to set. And when I didn't meet it, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to have a hard time with the fact that I didn't meet the goal I wanted to meet. So set something attainable. Is it possible for a human to drink 80 ounces of water a day? Yes, it's physically possible for somebody to drink 80 ounces of water today. Is it physically possible for a human to get up and go outside and walk 10 minutes after every meal? Yes, it is achievable. It's attainable. Now, if I said something like, I'm going to walk six miles every day. I, I'm, I've got, I don't exercise at all right now, but you know what? My goal is going to be six miles every single day. Is that achievable? Yes, but is it likely achievable? Probably not. We need to set a realistic goal for ourselves that starts off small. Is it relevant? Does it matter to my health journey? Is it just some random goal that really isn't going to matter in the long run to my health journey? I need goals that are relevant to my health journey. And then are they timely? Can I set a time to it? I don't want to set a time of a year. I want to set a time of this week. I'm going to drink 80 ounces of water every day this week. It's time bound and it's within a short time period. I'm not setting a big six month, one year goal. Those are all good and they have their place. But for the here and now, we need the specific Measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goals. Goals that we can measure this week or in two weeks. A short time frame so that when you get to the end of that week, you can look back and say, I achieved every single goal. Part of that is creating, I went the wrong direction. I can't get it to go forward. Hold on. 
part of that is creating a solid plan, okay? We have to have a plan in place and making our goal timely is really, really important for having a solid plan. I am going to walk every day this week. That is a plan. I'm going to, I'm going to eat my meal. And after my meal, I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to sit down while I eat. And the minute I'm done, I'm going to put my dish in the sink. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for a walk. That is a short-term goal. I'm going to do that every day this week. It's super important to have short-term goals like that because we live in a world of immediate gratification. If you are used to getting what you want now, I order off Amazon and it's here tomorrow. I order off Sam's Club and say, deliver it to me in an hour and it's right on my doorstep and I don't even have to get dressed. We live in that world of immediate gratification. So short-term goals and short-term strategies give us quick wins. They give us instant gratification. And those small victories, especially in the very beginning of your journey, and we're only in January, y'all, we're in the very beginning. Okay, in the very beginning of your health journey, it provides you a sense of accomplishment. It gives you a boost and it gives you motivation. That positive reinforcement is often the key right there that keeps people going is when they meet their small goals. But we also need to look at long-term, right? Long-term strategies are not things like, I'm going to walk two miles every day for the rest of the year. We can set a goal like that, but a better goal would be something like, I'm going to change my exercise routine. This year, I'm going to go from not exercising to having a solid exercise routine. That is a good long-term goal. It's a year long. We can set a strategy for it in little increments, little lifestyle changes that are gonna build up over time. We're gonna get the quick results, the quick gratification from meeting the short-term goal, but in the end, it's gonna build up to big wins. And it's going to make that initial excitement feel that you had in the very beginning even bigger. It's going to be an amazing feeling when you get there. Combining these short-term goals and the long-term goals helps us build resilience. Short-term strategies help us overcome all the hurdles we're going to have. Guys, if you think you're going to go through your health journey and nothing's ever going to go wrong and you're never going to have a hurdle, you're never going to have a struggle, you are going to be really, really, really disappointed. <laughs> really disappointed, okay? Long-term strategies like setting a long goal helps us provide a foundation where we can continuously improve. Guys, I have been in a stall for two years, two years, 700 and something, something days since I've lost a pound. In fact, I've gained weight since I was at my lowest. I've had to build resilience by looking at the small wins right from the beginning. I built those small wins upon each other. And that has given me the resilience to push through now when I feel like I'm stoppable at moments. It's given me that unstoppable attitude to keep going forward. Also setting short-term goals is going to help prevent burnout because we can easily get burnout. If we set a goal I made this mistake last year. I set a goal one mile a day with KJ on the treadmill. I don't know if you remember that, but I started it last year and I got about two and a half months in and then I got burnout. I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go for walks on my time. I don't want to do it for anybody else. I don't want to post about it. I just want to go for a walk. Burnout is real. So when you implement these small strategies, it can help prevent burnout. Also, it helps us learn to adapt. Life is dynamic. Circumstances change. Things are going to go all different directions. Short-term strategies are going to help us adjust quickly and accommodate when things come at us. Long-term strategies are going to provide us stability and a framework to grow on. Consistency. Short-term strategy, strategies are going to help us establish the initial habits, but the long-term strategies are going to enforce the consistency. And consistency is the key to making a lasting change. A lasting change does not happen between January 1st and January 31st. You have to keep going. The long-term is where the beauty is. The long-term strategies, if you are not at your goal weight within two weeks to start 
Well, neither am I. You have got to be there for the long haul if you want to see change. Short-term strategies also give us something to celebrate along the way. I like to celebrate my wins. Listen, I love to high-five myself in the mirror like a tool. I do it all the time. I'm like, you go, KJ. I do it all the time. I talk to myself like, like I'm two people. And I'm sure if it was witnessed, people would think I was quite bizarre. But I celebrate those small wins along the way. It keeps me going, okay? We need to balance short-term, like, like they're a stepping stone that gets us to our big, long-term, hairy, scary goal that we want. And the way we do that is with healthy habits. Healthy habits, repeatable healthy habits consistency with our healthy habits reinforces that mindset. We make the mindset, we make our mind up, we're going to do it. We make the changes, it reinforces the mindset. We continue making our mind up, we're going to do it, and it reinforces the mindset. And it's just a circle. It continues to get stronger and stronger and stronger. If it didn't, I wouldn't be way over a thousand days on plan right now. That consistency in the beginning, the first four months, it was really kind of a mark when I hit four months of 100% on plan that I was like, wait a minute, I've gone four months. I went through Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and I didn't eat anything off plan and I didn't die. That reinforced to me that these habits were sustainable. I didn't have to be stoppable anymore. I didn't have to be that girl that fell off the wagon every time, walked into work with her tail between her legs, holding her culotta because she gave in. That didn't have to be me anymore. I had the strength to do this and I'd proved it to myself in four months, not in four days, not in four weeks of January. It took four months before I started to really, it kind of hit me in the head to say, KJ, you can do this. You can form a lasting, this can be a lifestyle consistency was that key for me. Repeating those behaviors ingrained them in me, okay? It's what has made me, this momentum has made me highly motivated, even though I'm in the midst of a struggle, even though I'm up against some weight gain, even though my hormones are out of whack and my thyroid is out of whack and all of this and that and the other thing are out of whack, I'm still not stoppable. Those things are not going to get better by me going back to my old lifestyle. I can only make my health issues better and better and better by continuing this journey. And now I have that momentum and that momentum is not going anywhere. It doesn't mean I don't have days where I want to curl up and cry because I have them just like today was one of those. But that consistency has built resistance in me. It's built inertia. It has, <laughs> when those obstacles arrive, arise when the obstacles come up and come at me and start throwing their hands the habit that I've built of consistency has kept me moving forward it's helped me push through the challenge I sit I have my little cry but I don't have my pop tart I have my cry and not my pop tart so how do we build those habits well we start small you don't have to jump in a hundred percent you can make goals that are I'm going to stay on plan every day this week except Friday and then you do that for two or three weeks. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to stay on plan every day, except I'm going to have one day that I have nothing but crossovers. And you enjoy those crossovers. And then you go another couple of weeks. And then you say, you know what? I think I can go 100% on plan this week and see what happens. Start small. Maybe it's exercise. Start with a 10-minute walk four times a week. Don't start by saying, I'm going to go for a walk every single meal, 10 minutes, no matter what, for an entire week. Is it doable? Yes, but start smaller. Start smaller with 10 to 15 minutes a day, four days a week, and then go to five days a week, and then maybe go to six days a week, and then maybe go to 30 minutes a day, four days a week, and then 30, five days a week. Slowly build on it. And before you know it, you're going to be walking more than your toddler running around the house. You're going to have 25,000. You're going to be Debbie Harden walking more steps than anybody in the coaching group. You're going to be doing your bike. You're going to be doing all of these things, just getting tons and tons and tons of steps. It builds slowly, okay? Use 
positive reinforcement too. reward yourself when you stick to healthy habits, go get yourself a manicure or something, go get yourself a new planner at the, at the target that you're not going to fill out, go get yourself something, treat yourself, not with food. Food is not a reward. Food is fuel. The end. We can enjoy food. We can love food, but it is not a reward. It is fuel. We don't, we don't tell our car she did a good job by letting the gas tank overflow. We only put in our bodies what we need to thrive, okay? Buy a new book. Maybe it's go to the spa and get your hair done. Go get your eyebrows waxed. Go get somebody to pluck the chin off your hair, your hair off your chin, okay? That's what I do. I go get my hair, my chin plucked, okay? Also having accountability and support. Share your goals with a trusted friend, with a family member, with a coaching group, okay? Have someone that you can share your progress with, that you can help provide motivation for them and they can provide motivation for you. Maybe join a support group, an accountability act. There's so many things that you can do to build accountability. Accountability is one of, (laughs) guys, uh, accountability, listen, I really want to cry and I'm not going to. Accountability is what has really made a difference for me. Community. Today, when I was stoppable, when I felt stoppable, I was on with my girlfriends on Marco Polo saying how much I was struggling. And within minutes, all of them were reaching out to me privately. Some of them being like, I'm so sorry, I'm praying for you. And that felt so good. And then some were like, excuse me, who are you talking to yourself like that? Some were giving me the hard word that I needed to hear. I had the accountability. I had the motivation from my friends, from my accountability group. It helps maintain focus. It reminds you of your objectives and the importance. It reminds you of your why. Your accountability group is there to remind you exactly why you are putting in this effort. Regular check-ins with an accountability group ensures that you are going to make consistent progress. When you have somebody there that is there to slap your hand when you need it, to pray for you when you need it, to hug you when you need it, virtually or in person, that is going to ensure consistent progress because you have somebody to answer to. Accountability helps you meet schedules. It helps you meet deadlines. It helps you prevent procrastination and putting things off till later when you want to do it, right? You need to do it right now, but you don't want to do it right now. It reinforces the importance of adhering to your healthy habits, okay? It also gives you good feedback. Just like I was talking today, just like I was just talking about the girls, you know, one of them slapping my hand. They're also there to say, what's on your plate? That, 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 is that on plan? Or that meal looks awesome, but I think you should consider swapping out this. Have you have you considered doing it with a lean protein instead of a fatty protein? Or have you tried this salad dressing that's healthier? Accountability partners give you feedback. They give you insights that you often go, wait a minute, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? They help you find areas where you can adjust your approach. Or maybe they can say, you know what? I used to struggle with that same thing and this is what I did. And it gives you new ideas. You get new recipe ideas. There's a whole bunch that of feedback and adjustments that you can make based on the people you do it with. There are so many ways to stay accountable. So many ways. There's tracking tools. There's online groups. There's coaching groups. There's friends down the road. There's parents. There's husbands. You can say to your husband, I need to stay on plan. I need you to tell me when you think I'm making an unhealthy choice, even though I'm going to be mad at you for a moment and I'm going to say, who are you telling me what to eat? I need you to hold me accountable and I need to be okay with being held accountable. I need to give permission permission to people in my life to hold me accountable. That is one of the biggest things we don't do, guys. We ask people to hold us accountable, but then when they do, we're like, excuse me. We need to give people permission to hold us to task. It's how it's how we're going to actually get accountability when we allow it. 
to happen. We have to allow it to happen. We have to recognize setbacks. Setbacks are going to happen. There are going to be setbacks in your journey. If you think you're going through this journey and never having any struggles or issues, you're wrong. You're wrong. You are going to have setbacks. You're going to need to find a way to give yourself self-compassion. You're going to learn from your mistakes, adapt your plan, expect those things to come up. When we find ourselves in a situation where we're like, oh my gosh, I can't stay on plan. And I, I just, I went ahead and ate off plan. When we don't have that resilience built up, we don't expect that setback to happen. We easily fall off the wagon. But when a setback happens and you have resilience because you've set smart goals, you have accountability, you've made a plan, all of these things. When you get to that point, your wagon may wiggle a little, okay? But it doesn't roll over and go in the ditch and catch on fire and burn all the Twinkies that were on the back of the, the wagon. There's a difference in your setbacks when you have all of these things in place. You've got to be able to learn from your mistakes. You've got to embrace them as an opportunity. A growth mindset helps us look at mistakes as an opportunity for change. Oops, I accidentally had a crossover. I didn't mean to do that. That doesn't mean I throw in the towel and have crossovers or off-plan food the rest of the day. No, I keep going because I just learned that that food that I enjoy, I just kind of crossed it over, made a little too much, too much fat, too many carbs. And now I've learned from that. I need to recognize that it's not a, not a something to ruin my journey, but just something to help me learn. Okay, I need to be able to adapt my plan. I need to be flexible when those setbacks come. If my initial plan doesn't work as I thought it would, I need to be willing to change it, make an adjustment to it, reevaluate my goals. I need to reevaluate the strategies I set. I need to look at the timeline I set. Is it too stringent? Do I need to change it? It's okay to be flexible with yourself just because we find ourselves not meeting the goal that we had planned for ourselves doesn't mean we can't make a change, make an adjustment and make a shift and keep going. And along the way, just like I said, you need to celebrate those wins. Like I said before, consistency is so much more important than perfection. I may talk about 100% on plan. And while I think that 100% on plan is awesome and it has done world of wonders for my food addiction struggles, progress and consistency is way more important than being perfect. When we strive for perfect all the time, that leads to burnout. Here's an example of where I don't stress over perfection. If I go out for coffee, I eat on plan, okay? I go out for coffee and I have forgotten my sweetener and the only sweetener there is a Splenda. <gasps> Are you ready? I'll put a Splenda in my coffee. Gasp. Do I have Splenda in my house? No. Do I get Splenda every time I go out? No. In fact, my purse has about 40 packets of um, Truvia in it. So when I go out, I just pop a couple of Truvia in my coffee. But if I happen to run out and the only option is a Splenda, I will eat a Splenda. Because for me, I'm still being consistent. I'm not doing something that's going to wreak havoc on my blood sugar. I'm not doing something that I'm going to have all the time. I'm still going to have consistency in my journey. I'm still going to have progress in my journey. When I when I say that's it, I'm never, I'll never, ever, ever, ever find myself in a situation like that. And then I do. That leads to burnout. It leads to disappointment. It leads to frustration. So I don't do that. I have a balanced approach to my health, a sustainable approach. I don't get caught up in the small details. I do the best I can all the time. I do not blatantly have a big off plan meal. I don't go to McDonald's and order a meal and say, okay, well, I'm going to call it on plan. I don't do that. I don't do that. But those little bits and pieces, having a personal choice item that some people would never in a million years consider eating like a keto bread or something like that. Those things make my journey more successful. They give me the ability to be consistent and they help keep me from burnout. We need to celebrate the small wins. 
I talked about that a minute ago. It's so important that we celebrate the small wins, you guys. You have to give yourself credit. When you've done well, recognize it, tell somebody, and cheer yourself on. You are your biggest cheerleader. We can expect everybody else in our world to cheer us on, but most of the time that's not going to happen. Sometimes we have a spouse or friend that every time they see us, they're going to be like, you look so good. You look so good. But you know what? What if you don't get that? What if somebody doesn't say that to you because they're just wrapped up in their own world all the time? You have to be your biggest cheerleader. It is so important that you give yourself credit when you do something good. The power of community. All right. These ladies on the right, this big group of ladies, these are the ladies that went to my retreat last year. You can only see kind of part of the photo. These women, these are my people. Okay. The power of community. I cannot say enough about community. It has been life changing for me for years. I had a friend here and there. I have a best friend in Maine. I had I had friends, I had coworkers that I got along with well, I would go to lunch with well a lot, I had friends, okay? But I didn't have sisters. That's what I have now. I have sisters that I would do anything for. They are an incredible part of my journey. I cannot in my wildest dreams, you guys, imagine doing this journey without the support of my sisters without these girls in my journey. I, it, it would not be possible. Okay. They motivate me. They encourage me. They uplift me when I'm having a day where I feel stoppable. Okay. They share goals with me. We have like-minded goals. We're all trying to get healthy. We're all trying to get as healthy as we can. Okay. We're all sharing those goals with each other. We're encouraging each other. We lift each other up. We pray for each other all the time. Do you know what an amazing, I can't even use the words. When I am going through a struggle and somebody stops what they're doing and says a prayer, that just, I mean, that it's just, it's life changing. Okay. Okay. They give me accountability and commitment. When other people are aware of your goals, you are going to stay committed to them. When you participate in with an accountability group to help track your progress, to set your milestones, maybe you meet together once a week and you, you talk about your goals. What, what are you going to do this week? Susan, how are you going to stay on plan this week? Shirley, what special meals are you going to make this week, Mary, that are going to help you stay on plan? I, uh, we often, we haven't done it as much the last couple of months because, you know, Christmas came and it's been busy, but for a long time, we used to spend Sunday afternoons on the, on the phone, uh, food prepping for the week together. Like we were all in the same room. We were each doing food prep, but we were on the phone. We were laughing and talking and cooking. And by the end of the afternoon, I'd had a blast talking to my girls and all my food was prepped for the week. We used to do that all the time. They are a motivating force for me and they push me to maintain my dedication. They remind me of my why. My why is valuable, but if I let it out of my sight, I'm going to, if I let go of my why, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do it if I let go of my why. Okay. They also help me share resources. I learned so much from these girls. I, share tips with them. They share tips with me, strategies, experiences, recipes. I often get new recipes. I, I can't, I, I have so many polos saved right now, like flagged for a reminder where somebody talked about a yummy recipe that I need to go back and try. Okay. It's a collective pool of information that we can all share. It's really, really powerful. So, all right. Renewing your commitment. This is the last step that is so, so important. And sticking to this through January, beyond the Januaries, okay? Reevaluating your goals. Constantly looking at your goals. Choosing objectives that excite you, that inspire you. Ensuring that your goals are, like we talked about, specific 
They're challenging. They're aligned with my long term. The process of starting fresh, compelling goals each month or week or every two weeks reignites your enthusiasm. It brings back that feeling of January 1st. If I start, if I do all this work setting a goal January 1st, and then I just kind of start to deviate from it a little bit, and I never stop and bring it back in and reset my goal, that's how you lose sight. Make a plan every week or every two weeks. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to quickly, it doesn't have to be a two-hour process. I'm going to quickly reevaluate my goals. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to see, are they still valid? Are they still achievable? How are we going to, how are we going to do this together? I'm going to visualize success in the future. Okay. I'm going to look at where I want to be in the future. Where can I, what can I do to achieve my health goals? What can I do to improve my well-being? And what will happen when I get there? When I picture what the potential is for me, there is power in that. I'm not talking about just saying, okay, I'm going to picture myself skinny. Picture my, I'm going to, skinny is not the goal here, okay? Skinny is not the goal. Healthy is the goal. Do I want to be skinny someday? Yeah, girl, we all want to be skinny, but I'm okay if I'm not. I'm okay if I stay right the size I am right now. That may be frustrating to feel. I may go through a lot of down days. I may feel a lot of struggles, but my goal is health. I visualize my health numbers being amazing, okay? I imagine my health numbers, my cholesterol, my A1C, all of that stuff, getting that report from the doctor and seeing everything in the green right in the center, visualizing that makes it tangible and it makes it feel achievable. And it reignites that motivation and reminds you of the positive outcome that is awaiting if you work for it. Okay. And I break down my goals into smaller steps. I divide these big health goals into smaller goals. They're more manageable that way. And I achieve, when I achieve the mini goals, like I said before, I celebrate the small wins and that gives me a sense of accomplishment and it's going to help me keep pushing forward for floor word. I can't talk tonight. I'm a little tongue twisted. All right. So I want to tell you about an offer that I have for you because you joined tonight. I am going to give away a seat if you are on the zoom. Okay. I'm going to, I have everybody's name that registered and I'm going to look and if they're on the zoom, then I'm going to give them a free seat in uh holy healthy February and March. Okay. My holy healthy group is quarterly. And then usually every, every quarter, I will open it back up for the, for two months. I want to tell you a little bit about what you get when you join holy healthy with KJ. Okay. The two-month package is typically $169, and because you joined me tonight, I'm giving you all a promo code. The promo code is UNSTOPPABLE. If, Susan, if you have the link to, um, if you go on my website, Joyful Life with KJ, and click on Holy Healthy New Year, it will bring you to the link, and can you please share that? If you join at the regular price is $169, if you use code UNSTOPPABLE, you're going to get a $15 promo code off that. You can break it into two separate payments to make it even easier. And the 15 will come off the first payment. When you join this group, you get five coaches. You don't just get KJ because there is a lot of people that need a lot of help. And I want to give you crazy levels of support. So when you join me, you get somebody that specializes in self-care, somebody that understands diabetes, somebody that is really, really good at food prep, somebody that does PCOS. We have just the lit gut health and fermentation and just the list goes on and on and on. Really knowledgeable coaches, okay? All certified THM coaches. You get a live Zoom every single week. I do a live Zoom on Monday night. The only time we don't do it is when there's a really big holiday that falls on it like Christmas or New Year's, okay? You get access to my... Marco Polo small communities, which are, I am going to say for people that put themselves in there and become a part of the community, they are 
life changing. I feel comfortable using those words because that's exactly what they have been to hundreds of women. Okay. Women have built community. They've built support. They've built friendships. They have changed their lives simply through the Marco Polo piece of this. I also do a live uh, cooking workshop every single month in February. You all, we, you all, I just turned y'all into you all. My Southern fell out a little bit. I was trying really hard to put on some Southern there and it fell off. We are going to make, are you ready for this? Dark chocolate creme brulee. Okay. It's the recipe has been tested. A lot of times I do recipes. I haven't even been tested. This one's been tested and it's amazeballs. Okay. We're going to do dark chocolate creme brulee. Every month we have a different cooking class. They're a lot of fun and you get that free. You get free access to the Holy Healthy Book Club, which we are doing uninvited right now. And we're going to do a different book every single quarter. And you get free access to that. Any challenges I do, like the February Faith Challenge that starts on Thursday, you get access to that for free. I do daily conversation starters. I do posts every day to keep you motivated. There are daily check-ins at the end of the day. You get to post your meals for a certified coach to review your meals and say, hey, I would tweak this. I would change this, or you did great, whatever. Every Monday, I post education in the group. We've been doing hope, restoring our theme for 2024 in Holy Healthy is, is uh, hope, is sorry, is restore. And January was restoring hope. February is restoring faith in our journey and March is restoring mindset. And if you've ever been part of my group and you've been part of mindset March, you're seriously going to love it. Okay. Mindset March is amazing. We give you a weekly menu where it's not a, a prescription. You don't have to follow it. It's a suggestion. And it's a menu that I like to follow quite often you get a copy of that and it comes with a grocery shopping list. You get a different challenge every week to keep you motivated. You get a gut health spotlight every single week to help you learn, help learn you about gut health and fermentation. You get access to a bank of, it's called 60 second smarty pants. Um, they're like one minute videos that highlight different things like Baobab and what is Baobab and why should I use it? And any past, um, Calls that I've had are posted in my education site. You get tracking tools. You get so, so much. And then you also get opportunities to purchase discounted one-on-one -on -one sessions with the coaches. You have PCOS issues. You can buy a you can buy a one-on-one uh, -on -one session with our PCOS coach. You need help meal planning, buy a session. She'll help, she'll walk you through it. And you get that discounted if you're part of it. So for the two months, because you're here, if you use code unstoppable, it's $154 for two months. You, you guys, that's dirt cheap when it comes to coaching. And I know it's not for everybody, but that is um, a very discounted price. In fact, this is the, the biggest discount I'm probably ever going to offer before I kind of change up the way things happen with the next quarter. All right. I am looking at my iPad right now and I have a little tool. Okay, is Melanie Branham on live? That's the first name. If she's here, she wins. Is she here? Oh my gosh, she is the very first name I drew and she's here, yay! All right, Melanie, so you win, you win. February and March in my group. So I, yay, I hope that interests you. I hope you're interested in joining if not let me know and I will pass it on to um another person and I haven't been able to see I see where there's a whole lot of chat so let me go ahead and I'm going to unmute I can't all I can see is that there's 87 chats but I can't see any of them I need to change my screen so let me stop sharing my screen for a moment and let me put it so you can unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. I just ask 
that if you're going to ask a question that if you can raise your hand using the um, reactions button at the bottom of the screen, there's a, you can click reactions and you can raise your hand and I can answer your questions. If you have any questions, I can pull up the chat, but I'm, I'm assuming that my coach team has answered most of the questions that are coming through the chat. But does anybody have any questions at all tonight that I can help answer or whoa 99 chats let me scroll all new Saturday night at eight. Okay. all right so I see somebody's off mute do you have a question Suzanne no not tonight thank you oh. though oh yeah no problem all right, friends, does anybody have any questions before I let you go? It's, it's almost eight, almost nine o'clock. I knew I'd be off this by nine o'clock and in bed. I got four minutes to brush my teeth and go to bed. Just kidding. I won't go that early. All right. Well, if you do come up with any questions, yes, it is. Smarty Pants is right through Kajabi, through my education site. Yep. Yep. Um, I think it's under... I think there's a category called smarty pants or it's under higher learning. Is it called smarty pants, Susan? It is smarty pants. Um, if you come up with any questions for me at all, please reach out to me. Your promo code unstoppable is good through February 1st. So if you're going to use that car code, make sure you sign up for it prior to February 1st and you will begin the, um, February Faith Challenge, where we're going to really challenge you in the group to look at your health journey through the eyes of your faith. That has been a game changer for me, you guys. When I, I for years, my faith was here, my faith, I had my faith, and I had my diet, my health plan, but I didn't intertwine the two. And when I brought them together and intertwined them and made them one, wow. Things really started to change. My perspective, my heart for my health, the way I cared about my choices changed. So we're going to really challenge that in the month of February in the group. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. And then I'm looking forward to really challenging some mindsets. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to talk about is mindset. So we're going to talk about that in March. So I hope to see some of you there. If you have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's inspired you to keep going and to keep pushing for the goals that you set for yourself on January 1 and to reignite that excitement that you felt on January 1. All right, my friends, have a wonderful night, guys. I love you all. See you next time. <laughs>